active transport moves substances from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. This movement is against the concentration gradient. On this side of the diagram is an example of a low concentration substance. Over on this side is an example of a high concentration substance. Now these two are separated by a cell membrane which runs through the middle. And sitting within the cell membrane is an active transport pump. This pump uses energy to move molecules against or up their concentration gradient. This is different from diffusion and osmosis, which follow the concentration gradient. It's important that you know the differences between these types of transport for your exam. So let's take a closer look at how active transport differs from diffusion and osmosis. Active transport requires energy from respiration. In this diagram, the mountain slope can represent a concentration gradient. Movement down the gradient, like when you're on a sledge, requires no energy. It's passive. Two examples of passive transport are diffusion and osmosis. However, movement up a concentration gradient requires energy, like hiking up a hill or swimming against a current. It's active and energy is used up, and this energy comes from respiration. It's really important that you know that diffusion and osmosis do not require energy, but active transport does. Some important substances are needed in larger quantities by cells, so they cannot rely on diffusion alone. An example of an important substance is glucose, needed for cell respiration. This is an example that's given in your spec. So where in the body would active transport of glucose be really important? Glucose is absorbed by active transport in the small intestine. This space on the inside of the intestine is the lumen. These projections here are the villi, and beneath the villi is the blood supply. After you've eaten a sugary meal, glucose might be higher in the intestinal lumen than in the intestinal cells and blood, so it can move by diffusion as it can move down the concentration gradient. However, there will be times when the glucose concentration in the intestinal lumen is lower than in the cells, so the glucose must move up or against the concentration gradient. When this is the case, the movement of glucose involves active transport. Active transport requires energy. This is different to diffusion and osmosis, which are both passive processes that don't require energy. For your exam, it's important that you can explain why sugar can be absorbed by active transport in the gut. Mineral ions are important for healthy plant growth. On the left hand side, you can see a healthy plant with a flower and nice green leaves. However, on the right hand side is a plant with a mineral deficiency. Plants need mineral ions or their growth will be stunted. So where do plants get these mineral ions from? Mineral ions are in very dilute concentrations in soil. This diagram shows a root hair cell. This has a large surface area and is specialised for the uptake of water and nutrients from the surrounding soil. These small purple squares show mineral ions. Now, these are available in quite a low concentration outside of the soil compared to inside of the root hair cell. So how do plants get these minerals from outside of the cell to move inside? Root hair cells absorb mineral ions from the soil by active transport. Because mineral ions have to move up a concentration gradient to get into the root hair cell, this requires energy. Once the mineral ions have been actively transported into the root hair cell, they are then transported further from the roots to the rest of the plant via the xylem. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there!